Okay, today we're looking at section 4.3, uh, making quick, quick graphs using intercepts. That begins on page 218. We're going to find intercepts of the graph of the linear equations, and we're going to use those to make quick graphs. First thing we're doing is looking at a couple definitions. First one's of x intercept. X intercept is the x coordinate of a point where a graph crosses the x axis. So if you're looking at a Cartesian plane like so, uh, with an equation coming through it. Okay. It's where it crosses the x axis. So you need to identify which axis you're looking at first. This is your y axis, the one going up and down, your vertical. This is your x axis, the one going across. This is your x intercept. Okay. That point there is your x intercept. That means that's where it crosses through it, intercepts the line. Uh, more specifically, though, it says it is the x coordinate of the point. The x coordinate. That's the part that gets people a little confused. Um, if, for example, this was at number, just to make it easy, that let's say that point was two zero. The x, the x intercept is what I have drawn there, but like I said, since it's the x coordinate, its value will simply be that your x value two. So the x-intercept of this equals 2, as it's drawn. Uh, likewise, your y-intercept is the same thing, except instead of dealing with your x-axis, now you're dealing with your y-axis. Um, right, similar looking equation as the last one. Uh, this one will be at that point there, again, to make it simple. Identify that your y-axis and your x, so it's this point is where it crosses through. Uh, that point would be zero, two as it's drawn. Again, your x your x value is the first one. Your y value is the second one. It is the y coordinate, as it says here, the y coordinate of a point where a graph crosses the y axis. So your y intercept in this case would be two, even though it is at point zero two. The y intercept's value would be two. Example number one says find the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the graph of the equation, negative 3x plus 4y equals 12. Okay, all we're going to do in order to find these, since it's the intercept, that means it's where it crosses the line. That means one of the values has to be zero. Um, and it's the opposite one, if you notice, it says in order to find the x-intercept, let y equal zero. So anytime you're looking for an x-intercept, you plug it in. Uh, zero in place of y. And we could see here, in place of this y here, we plugged in zero. So negative 3x uh, plus 4 times zero equals 12. And it's going to be really, these are going to be really quick and easy to do for the simple fact that when you multiply things by zero, they become zero. It's like adding zero to something and it actually, it eliminates itself. So 4 times zero eliminates this and it just leaves you with what's there. Negative 3x equals 12, and then in order to solve for x, you divide by negative 3 in order to get negative 4. Um, so the x-intercept is negative 4. Uh, so your ordered pair, this is your x value, and then your y value is where it's going to cross through the axis. It's always going to be 0 uh, if you're talking about the x-intercept. So it's negative 4, 0 as your ordered pair. Uh, in order to find the y-intercept with the same equation, um, you're looking for the y-intercept, you use the opposite, the opposite uh, value needs to be zero. So just like a second ago, we were looking for the x-intercept. Uh, here we were looking for the x-intercept, we let y equal zero. Now we're looking for the y-intercept, so we're letting x equal zero. So you write in the original equation and you plug it in zero in place of x. Again, anytime you multiply something by zero, what it's going to do is it's going to eliminate that part of the equation. And it's just going to leave you what's left. 4y equals 12. And just like on the other one, we divide by 4. And y is going to be equal to 3. So the y value is going to be 3. Your y intercepts 3. So remember, it's x comma y, where y's value is 3 and x's value is 0. Okay, as far as making a quick graph, once uh, you're going to do exactly what we just did a second ago, this time we have 3x plus 2.5y equals 7.5. Um, plug in 0, so find the x-intercept, so plug in 0 for y. Notice it's the opposite one. 
uh, anything times zero is going to be zero. Again, this eliminates this part of the equation, so it leaves you with 3x equals 7.5, divide by 3, and x equals 2.5. So the x-intercept is 2.5, or 2.5 comma zero as you're looking at it as an ordered pair, 2.5 comma zero. In order to find the y-intercept, do the same thing, except again, you're looking for the y-intercept, so plug in zero in place of x, it's the opposite one. So three times uh, zero will eliminate anything times zero. So you're left with 2.5y equals 7.5. Uh, get rid of times uh, 2.5 by dividing by 2.5 and y equals three or the y-intercept is three. So you have the points 2.5, zero. Let's bring them down real quick. Zero as one of your points and zero, three as your other point. So you plot those two points in order to make your graph. Remember, this is x, y, and this is x, y. So your first point, 2.5, 0, would be here. And your second point, 0, 3, would be there. Once you have your two points, you can draw your straight line through it. So last week, what we did was we plugged in values negative 1, 0, and 1 to graph our equations. And we ran the equation three times. This is a quicker way using x and y intercepts. Okay, the first ch uh, checkpoint says find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So you have the equation negative 4x plus 5y equals 20. In order to get the x-intercept, so we're going to work it two times. The first one, we'll look for the x-intercept, and I know the answer is already written. I just want to show you how to get to it. Then we'll look the second time for the y-intercept. Okay. In order to find the x-intercept, remember you want to plug in 0 for the opposite term. So we have negative 4 times x plus 5 times, remember the opposite term, we're going to plug in 0. So in place of y, we plugged in 0 equals 20. Anytime you have something times 0, it eliminates what that is. So what you're left with is negative 4x equals 20. And when you divide by negative 4 on both sides, x equals negative 5. So you can see your x-intercept is negative 5. Uh, do the same thing with your y-intercept. Use the same equation, except now in place of x, we're going to plug in zeros. Remember, it's the opposite term. Plus 5 times y equals 20. Anything times 0 leaves you with 0. So it, it, in fact, it eliminates that part of the equation. Uh, you're left with 5y equals 20. And when you divide by 5 on both sides, your y-intercept equals 4. And you can see here your y-intercept is 4. So... You could either plug this in as negative 5, 0, or you can simply say on the x-axis where the value is negative 5 is where your first point will be. Yeah, you can plug this second one in as uh, 0, 4, or you can say on the y-axis um, where its value is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 is where your second point will be. Once you have both of your points um, plotted, you can draw a straight line connecting through both of them. Okay, example three is drawing appropriate scales. You have y equals 5x plus 35. Uh, find the intercepts by substituting 0 for y and then 0 for x. So if you're looking for uh, the x-intercept of the first one, you plug it in into 0 in place of y. So you have 0 equals 5x plus 35. You can move either term over. Um, the way it's drawn here, it moves over 35. And so since that says plus 35, you do the inverse of that by subtracting 35. And that's what's done there. If you do it on one side, you have to subtract 35 on the other side. So you're left with this part of the expression here, or this part of the equation, negative 35 equals 5x. And then in order to get x by itself, you divide by 5, and x equals negative 7. So your x-intercept is going to be negative 7. When you're looking for the y-intercept, you're going to plug in 0 in place of x. Remember, it's the opposite one you plug in. Uh, so 5 times 0 eliminates this part, and it leaves you with just y equals 35. So you have an x-intercept of 7 and a y-intercept of 35. Now, this example says appropriate scales. That's what this is about. If you were to draw it, a graph now, um, your x-intercept would be negative 7. You could say 1, 2, three, four, five, six, seven or so, and get yourself a point there. That's not too far away. 
But if you try to stay all the way up to 35 on your y-axis, that's going to bring you way up here somewhere in that range. Uh, so we're going to have to use a different scale, and that's what we're looking at now. Uh, it says draw a coordinate plane that includes negative 7, 0, and 0, 35. Um, it's reasonable to use tick marks at 7-unit intervals. Now, this, um, this uses 7-unit intervals. I don't suggest that you do anything like that. I suggest you keep things simple. Uh, use Do everything by 2 or do everything count by fives or count by tens or count by twenties or count by hundreds. Count by something um, even and, and rounded and it's a whole lot easier. But just for this example, we'll use seven to humor this thing. Notice it says when making a quick graph, find the intercepts before drawing the coordinate plane and it'll help you, you know, uh, see how big you have to make it because you, you don't have to include something that goes up to two and 300 if you only have to get to 35 in this case. So you just want to make sure it gets at least to 35. And you can see that the way the picture is shown uh, here, it gets a little bit past that. It shows all the way up to 49, just counting to the next interval of 7. But you plot the point 7, uh, negative 7, 0, and you can see that your first point would be here at negative 7. And that's the reason it used 7s, because of that first one was 7, and the second one hit 35, just to keep them... We're using the same um, factors, so 7. And then 0, 35, don't go left or right at all, but go up to 35 for your second point. And then you draw your, your line connecting to both of them. Okay, and then the uh, last checkpoint says graph the equation y equals negative 5x plus 50. The first thing you need to do is you need to t find your x-intercept, and you need to find your y-intercept. Okay, uh, so for your x-intercept, you're going to plug in 0 in place of y, so it'll be 0 equals negative 5x plus 50. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you want to move over one of them, we want to move over negative 5x. We'll add 5x to it. You add 5x to the right, you got to add 5x to the left. And what you're left with is a positive 5x on the left equals these will cancel. And this will come down 50. In order, to, in order to get x by itself now, you divide by 5. You divide the left by 5, you got to do the right. These will cancel and leave you with x. And 50 divided by 5 is 10. So your x-intercept is 10. And we'll do the same thing for our y-intercept, except this time what we'll do um, in place of x, we'll plug in 0. So y equals negative 5 times instead of x, it's 0 plus 50. Uh, again, anything times 0 means it multiplies it by 0, so it, it eliminates it from the equation y equals 50. So you have your x-intercept at 10 and your y-intercept at 50. Um, your scale would have to be, it would have to include... Uh, it went by fives according to this, but you'd have to, it might be easier for you to go by tens. Uh, but when you graph your x intercept or where it's going through your x axis, you'd graph it at 10. Remember, this is your x axis. And your y, where it goes through, you graph it at 50 for your second point. Once you have both of your points, you can cross through them or you can connect them with a straight line. 